Thanks for watching Henry AI Labs. This video is going to show you a 600 times speed up using the Rapids implementation of TSNE on GPUs compared to the CPU SK Learn version. This tutorial is powered by the Data Science PC built by Digital Storm. This PC has two Titan RTX GPUs on it, which we're going to use to do the TSNE clustering of the CIFAR 10 dataset. This video is exploring the speed ups for the TSNE algorithm when using the Rapids GPU implementation through the CUML library compared to the traditional CPU implementation on SK Learn. TSNE is a visualization algorithm for taking high dimensional data sets like CIFAR 10 or maybe the intermediate features of a neural network when trained to classify CIFAR 10 and then embed them into two or three dimensions such that we can visualize them to get some intuition about our data and to uh, give us insight as to how we might want to do things like label smoothing, you know, label engineering or things like uh, data collection, data augmentation all these kinds of things. So in this article, we're gonna show you a notebook where we go through the CIFAR 10, build an image classifier, and then visualize the low dimensional embeddings, and we're gonna see a 600 times speed up using the rapid CUML library compared to SKLearn TSNE. These two code blocks highlight the key idea of this video. In this case, we're embedding these 512 dimensional representations of the CIFAR 10 after going through our image classifier, and we're embedding 50,000 such 512 dimensional vectors. So up top is the sklearn implementation of TSNE. This embedding takes 1,918 seconds in order to convert this data from 50,512 dimensional vectors into 50,000 two-dimensional vectors such that we can visualize it using something like matplotlib or seaborn. Compared to this, the rapid CUML implementation of TSNE takes three seconds. So using rapids and using the GPU accelerated data science library for the TSNE embedding, we're seeing a speed up of about 600 times compared to the SK Learn implementation. Rapids recently announced the release of their 0.10 Rapids library. In this article, they discuss many things like uh, new implementations of different libraries, things like the updates to CU Spatial, and a lot of different other things. But one of the things that I was most excited, pictured here, is an accelerated TSNE model built upon the GPU acceleration work from Kenny Labs and provides one of the most popular approaches for high performance dimensionality reduction while running 1,000 times faster than CPU-based implementation. So I was really excited to check this out and see exactly how, uh, how much faster the Rapids, the new update to the TSNE library is compared to the previous, uh, you know, SK Learn for TSNE. This paper, TSNE CUDA, GPU Accelerated TSNE and its Applications to Modern Data, is a great research paper exploring the use of the TSNE accelerated with the GPU CUDA data frames and showing how this kind of uh, TSNE visualization is useful, as well as going through the math that is used to do the TSNE embedding if you're interested in uh, getting into the details of this. So in their article, they show things like how uh, when they're clustering the data in the raw pixel space. So this in this case, they're taking the MNIST data set, which is 28 by 28 by 1, and they're embedding it in the raw pixel space. So this is before it's been through any classifier, just raw as the images are. And so you see this very interesting uh, visualization from the TSNE, where it seems like you could already just put a, like a one-layer neural network to classify this. And then, contrastingly, this is what the CIFAR 10 data set looks like in the raw pixel space as detailed in their paper. So another really cool thing about their paper is that they show that now that you can accelerate the, uh, you know, the TSNE embeddings by using GPUs, you're able to do things like do TSNE embedding of the entire 1.2 million ImageNet uh, data set. Previously using CPU implementation, something like this would be completely computationally intractable. And now I think with the addition of things like Rapids open source libraries, we're going to see more and more people realizing that they can use uh, TSNE to visualize, do this exploratory data analysis on their high dimensional data sets, even when they have really, really large data sets and they want to visualize a lot of data. In order to run the Rapid 0.10 library on the data science PC by Digital Storm, I've done this uh, NGC container for the Docker environment that's going to have the Rapid 0.10 libraries. So I definitely recommend doing this. I also tried to install it locally, but just found that using the Docker container from NGC was a lot easier. So all you do is you pull the environment and then you uh, run the Docker command to fire up the environment. So also in this uh, in the documentation in NGC for the Docker container, you can see how you might construct, set this up if you want to use your own custom data set. So what you would do is you would put your uh, path in your local machine to your data set in this line of code, and then you would, in the uh, Jupyter Lab, the, the Docker environment fires up, you have access to your data through this uh, directory. So you might want to do import OS, and then uh, you know do the os.change directory, OS dot, you know, get the list of the contents of the directory in order to navigate to find your local data in the Docker container. The first thing we do is import the necessary libraries that we're going to need for this. 
uh, import TensorFlow, import Keras, and then load in the CIFAR10 data set, convert the, uh, you know, pre-process the data, and then do the categorical encoding of the labels. In these lines of code, we import the necessary libraries from Keras in order to construct our neural network. So note this layer right here is the most interesting layer for our purposes. This is the uh, dense layer right before the uh, classification layer, which we're going to take th these intermediate activations and visualize them using the TSNE by converting these 512 dimensional vectors into two dimensions. So other than this, we just compile the model using the RMS prop optimizer and we get ready to fit the model. In this line of code, we fit the model, training it for about 100 epochs till it converges at about 79% classification accuracy. We're doing this to try to structure the way that the uh, 512 dimensional vectors are embedded to make sure that they have the semantic clusterings and to make it so it's fitted and just to kind of see how our classifier is performing compared to, say, clustering this in the raw pixel space of the original data set. This line of code up top is how we take the model and we copy it such that the output is just this intermediate activation of the original neural network. So we do this by using this syntax of outputs equals model.get layer and then the name that we had assigned to that 512 uh, dimensional fully connected layer that we defined earlier when we're defining our sequential model. So now we have our embeddings and so we loop through our training data and so this line of code right here is uh, something that you have to do for inference with these Keras models. You have to expand the dimensions so it's say uh, 1 by 32 by 32 by 3 rather than just passing it in the three-dimensional 32 by 32 by 3 because this is just how the Keras model works. So then we predict the model so now we have our 512 dimensional vector from this but now what we need to do is we need to flatten this so it's 512 uh, dimensions alone rather than being 1 by 512. There's a little syntax that's uh, important for our embeddings. So now what we do is we import the CUDF library from Rapids and we import uh, CUML from Rapids as well and we get our TSNE function. So first we're going to convert our embeddings into a NumPy array and then we're going to print our embeddings that shape. We have 50,000 of these embeddings each which are 512 dimensional vectors. So here is a line of code where we define the TSNE algorithm using the Barnes Hut method which is optimized to run in order n log n compared to order n squared. In this line of code we fit the TSNE embedding to our data. We use the time it function in order to see what the standard deviation on the time is. So we see a very small 160 millisecond uh, deviation between the three second timing to run this embedding. So now we uh, have our embeddings and we use this in order to, uh, this line of code in order to visualize the TSNE embedding and in order to label the color bar by the CIFAR 10 classes like airplane, car, bird, all these different things. After running this line of code, we get our TSNE embedding of the 512 dimensional intermediate activations of the image classification network. Some of the really interesting things to observe are the clusterings between semantically similar classes. So we see how the truck red is embedded in between the car. So this is a really interesting uh, sort of example of the kinds of things that you can discover when doing your TSNE visualizations. So there's a lot of things that you can uh, derive from this. You know, where you need to smooth your labels, uh, where you might want to get more data or apply data augmentation. So compared to something like a confusion matrix, which would give you this 10 by 10 grid where you can see like maybe, you know, these three cases are where uh, you know trucks are being classified as cars incorrectly. This kind of a TSNE visualization uh, it gives you just a little more information and a more a little better of an intuition of what's happening compared to just having this confusion matrix type of visualization. As mentioned earlier, we take this same data, these same embeddings, and we try it with the SK Learn implementation of TSNE, and we compare it with the Rapid CML TSNE implementation. Using SK Learn, we see this takes 1,918 seconds compared to three seconds using the Rapid CML TSNE implementation. I was interested in looking more into TSNE after reading this paper from the ICCV conference, Improving Adversarial Robustness via Guided Complement Entropy. In this case, they present this new uh, loss function compared to the cross entropy function, loss function, this guided cross entropy loss, where they achieve this kind of TSNE visualization of the CIFAR 10 class compared to this kind of visualization, which is similar to what we just saw, although this is probably a much more optimized model. So this is interesting to see how they're deriving this insight, where they have this natural adversarial robustness due to the smoothness in the decision boundaries, which can then be, you know, visualized in the TSNE low dimensional space. So I think it's really interesting to think of what kind of applications can be uh, derived from these TSNA visualizations and what kind of insights we can gain into our loss functions does, and how this helps with things like adversarial robustness or generally you know, uncertainty prediction and all of these kinds of things. Going to the cited papers from this TSNE CUDA paper provided some additional insight for me as to the future of TSNE on CUDA and the GPU accelerated uh, algorithm. So these two papers are probably presenting uh, novel ideas into how to further accelerate this, although I haven't looked into them. And then this paper was something that was really interesting to me, is image clustering using pre-trained neural networks. So one way of doing something like image retrieval, like 
I, here's an image, can you go find me the most similar image from a massive image database, would be to compute the distance between uh, the intermediate activations of image classifiers. So say you pass it through a ResNet and then you look at that final fully connected layer, which could be like a 1,000, 24 dimensional vector, and you want to find the nearest neighbor in that space. So this is probably one of the most popular approaches to doing image retrieval, image search based on, you know, a content-based search. So I think it's a really interesting thing to think about how uh, rapids and these GPU accelerated uh, clustering algorithms on this kind of you know, vector data is going to have an enormous impact on image retrieval and applications like this. If you're interested in testing out TSNE for yourself, you can come to the Rapids notebooks and the CML notebooks and look at this Im uh, implementation of the TSNE, which is what I use to get started with this project. In this case, they walk you through how to cluster the fashion MNIST dataset in the raw pixel space. So you see, uh, particularly the embedding visualization, this code uh, is what I use in order to get that final plot. And then uh, also, this is how you set up the algorithm. Thanks for watching this example of TSNE on Rapids showing a 600 times speed up when visualizing the intermediate activations of a CIFAR 10 image classifier. Please leave comments about how you think the TSNE is useful and how you think that Rapids enabling this problem to be much more tractable so that you could use this for larger data sets like passing the entire ImageNet data set through a TSNE embedding could be useful. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.